how do we solve this problem? Any thoughts? How do we solve the problem? I guess somebody already mentioned it as an answer. So I'm giving you guys a hint there. Timeout, yes. Thank you for saying that. Yes, timeout is the answer. When something is taking a while and it shouldn't take a while, what do you do? You say, hey man, timeout, you're taking too long. You're done, all right? I'm going to end this thing. So something is sitting in a thread pool and then um, something is taking a long time. So what do you do? They say, okay, you've, I've given you as much time as you need and then uh, you still haven't returned it. So you go away, you return back an error. And once you return an error, that thing goes away from uh, a concurrent thread. Uh, I see a bunch more uh, uh, answers here. It says increase the size of the Tomcat thread pool. Well, that will sh solve the problem temporarily. And then with the new size, it's gonna get filled up. And then what are you gonna do? You're gonna increase again, get bigger servers again. It's a problem that will that you can push for a little bit, push it down the road a little bit by increasing the, the thread pool or increasing the amount of resources, but it is going to come and you know, um, raise its ugly head in a little while after that, because especially when the number of requests are increasing, it becomes a problem. And this is especially an issue with, um, with stuff like web applications. I've had bad experiences with that. What do people do? Let's say you're using a web application, right? What do you do when things are slow? The first thing that you do is click refresh. So when an application becomes slow, you have hundreds of users clicking refresh a bunch of times. And what it's doing is it's basically multiplying the number of requests that are coming in. So once it reaches a tipping point where things are slow, it's quickly gonna go downhill because of all those users hitting refresh, right? I have had personal experience with it. So it is not enough to increase the resources. That is not the solution. That's not a long-term solution to the problem. You need to have a way to handle issues on an ongoing basis with the resources that you have. And if you can afford bigger hardware, sure, get it. And then also implement this because you might run into that issue even with the bigger hardware. With timeouts, you can technically have a solution for this problem. So you're basically removing threads when they're taking too much time and then it's gonna allow for uh, the faster microservices, the faster threads to go through fine, okay? So um, how do you set a timeout? We are using the spring rest template to make API calls here, right? So we are using a spring rest template to say, make this API call and return back a response. And we are not giving it any timeout information. We are saying we have no error handling, no timeout information. We're saying, take your time, do whatever you want, let it get, get back the response to me when it's done. Right? That's what we are doing with our code. So we can set timeouts with Spring REST template. We can say, hey, REST template, I'm gonna ask you to make these API calls, but remember this is the timeout. So if somebody is not returning a response back within this time, just end it right there. Give me an error, all right? We can set this. This is not the ideal way to set timeouts though. This is one of two ways I'm gonna be teaching you today uh, about how you can set timeouts, right? This is the first way I'm gonna be teaching you. There is a second way I'm gonna teach you, which is coming up next, which is a preferred way. I would recommend you use that for setting timeouts because it's much, much, much more powerful. But it is, uh, this is one way of doing it. It's a simpler way I'm gonna show you because you might see this code in the wild and I want you to be prepared when you see this. You will know exactly what this is doing.